live from the basement car park at Area 51 and broadcast worldwide in association with leading radio stations via the internet. It's the Elegant Universe. Your host, abducted from Melbourne, Australia, here's Peter Gagliardi and Shane Hill. As we explore the weird, the mysterious, the unexplained with Susie J. Today I have horror movie facts, reincarnation and a little ditty about Humpty Dumpty. Mm. And of course, filling in for Haley just for the moment, it's Frankie Hamster. Great to be back here on the last Friday of the month. Interesting conspiracy we've got today that involves blacked out cars, disgruntled pre- protective services employees and feral animals. So listen in. And of course, your host with the most. Playing thinking. video games. <laughs> Playing video games. Is that what they call it now? It's okay. Peter G. Yes, welcome to the show, everyone. Yeah, as Shane said, pretty good show today. <laughs> it should be. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let's, say, let's, let's say enthusiastic, Peter. Okay. Yeah. We miss, here's a few things we miss. We miss my review on Fifty Shades, Yeah, where we get to play the roles, mm-hmm. that kind of, what do you call that, impromptu theatre radio, theatre sports yeah. radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a yeah. radio like play. Space jump. Again. Yes, a radio play. And who's our special guest, Frankie? Uh, it'll be Brett. Hunter, local Melbourne comedian and Comics Lounge regular. Ooh. All right. So, all this and more. Stay tuned. You're listening to The Elegant Universe. We'll be back after this. Yeah, it's pretty clear. I ain't commercial crew. But hey, this is Haley, your pseudo like psychic from The Elegant Universe. Make sure you tune in to 94.1 FM on Fridays from 4 to 6. All the right places. <laughs> Yes, love hurts. It can hurt emotionally, but more important, it can also hurt you physically. It can hurt you in a way which nobody who owns a hot tub and lives in California can afford to be unaware of. Yes, I'm talking about California hot tub rectal gonorrhea. This painful and curable disease can make an enjoyable soak in a hot tub with family, friends, and dog into a literally unforgettable experience. If you catch California hot tub rectal gonorrhea, not only will you walk around feeling like you're about to pass a twisted sardine can lid, you'll also smell like a pile of burning tractor tires. So don't jump out of the frying pan and into the hot tub. Because if you get California hot tub rectal gonorrhea, it'll really burn your ass. This has been a public service message brought to you by the Citizens Against CHTRG Foundation. California hot tub rectal gonorrhea. We're not going to take it sitting down. Welcome back. You join us on 94.1 FM and 3WBC worldwide on the internet to join in and be part of the show. Go to the Facebook page at... The Elegant Universe Radio Show. Make sure you put Radio Show on the end <laughs> to Frankie's yes. page. You'll have connections to Susie at the Elegant Universe. Yep. And of course, Peter and yours truly. And well. Hayley. And Hayley. And Hayley. And Hayley. Yeah. Mm. So, we have news. <laughs> believe in reincarnation? Well, okay, how long have you got? Uh, two hours. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let it begin. Okay. Do I believe in reincarnation? Yeah. Short answer, no. Okay. So you think this is your first life and, and only, only life? And only. Yeah. Peter? I, I used to in a past life believe it, <laughs> but I don't believe it now. So. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Frankie. Well, being the resident conspiracy theory expert, I think that's a dumb question. Okay. Of course I but believe in I, it. I, I suspect we're about to be educated. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Not necessarily. But uh, there, was a five, there is a five-year-old boy called Luke Ruhlman from Cincinnati, Ohio. And he is five years old. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Right. yeah. He is convinced he was a 30-year-old black woman right. called Pam. Oh, my gosh. Remind me about Pam and another story later. Okay. Okay. Uh, Same from Pam. From Chicago. Did she take a parking space? <laughs> <laughs> he remembers <laughs> leaping from a burning building in 1993, right. dying, then being reincarnated, and yeah. remembers being named by his parents, okay. Luke, when he was reborn. Yep. Right. His mother told Fox 8 that mm. from the age of two, Luke used to say, so this is pretty young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I used to be Pam, but I died. I went up to heaven and... And I saw God and he pushed me back down. And when I woke up, I was a baby and you named me Luke. Now, here's, here's some information yeah, that sort right. of supports the story. Yes. Go on. So his mother, <laughs> he 
is. You have you don't believe me at all, do you? Quiet, skeptic His Peter. His mum <laughs> did research and found a news article about a Pamela Robinson who died in 1993, <gasps> a black woman, when she was in a hotel which caught fire. Right. <gasps> and Luke was then shown a selection of photos of about 10 photos of black women. Mm-hmm. We're not being racist here. Yep. And, uh, and only one of them in that... <laughs> photo was dead and it was this woman Pamela and that's the one he picked out straight away Okay, absolutely makes total sense to me research has been done uh, psychological research into young children children under the age of 8 have amazing clairvoyant and uh, ESP abilities that are yet to be studied or even delved into. Okay, so this story makes studied, complete where are these sense. Reports? Oh no! <laughs> how, how can you have the reports if they're yet to be studied? Well, no, intricate ones like that. Research very intricate shows, stories. But but, but research has shown that that young kids. What research? No, uh, generalised research. <laughs> generalised general 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 research. <laughs> okay. Mainly conducted by me <laughs> and children that I've repeatedly <laughs> fathered. Google. Uh, no, no, generalised research <laughs> conducted by me and children that I've re- reputedly fathered. Over the years, fathered. fathered. Oh, fart lab. I don't. <laughs> true, I, folks. I don't we'll fart on. children. I fart on children. But that's another story. <laughs> uh, no, this is true. Young kids do have a clairvoyant ability, and it's past the age of eight they find it hard to hang on to it. Now, clairvoyant ability, reincarnation, are they the same thing? No. But being able to tap into someone's uh, other soul, a spirit, being on another plane, alternate universe. Oh, yes, yeah. of course. You're listening to the <laughs> Elegant Universe. We'll be back with more after this. I don't believe me. from the maximum security installation for the criminally insane entertainer. Running, hiding, with nothing more than their wits. And now incredibly good looks. They flee to create the most talked about radio show on this station. The Elegant Universe. Their names, Peter Gagliardi and Shane Hill. Criminal masterminds of the highest order. Hear them on 94.1 before they get caught again. Welcome back to the studio of the Elegant Universe. We've kicked Frankie out temporarily because mm-hmm. the lovely Haley has returned. Yes, it's back. Hello. Hello. Thank yes, it's back. you. You were late because... I was, because I had quite a week. I was talking to the stars, as I always yeah. do, trying to get everybody's futures. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and the stars said some very, very horrible things about me. Perhaps that I was going to die this week, something okay. like that. So we kind of got in a bit of an argument. And so I haven't been talking to the stars at all. Right. Oh, I'm okay. giving them the cold shoulder. So, oh. so I'm guessing no horoscopes. No horoscopes this week. And okay. they kept kind of getting in my way as I was trying to drive here They'll today. Be begging. They'll Ruining be begging. everything. Yeah. Meddling fate. Red lights but all the way. It's okay, because mm-hmm. I got here. Yes, yep, yep. Safely. and I'm hoping that they'll listen to the show, realize how awesome I am, and make up with me. They will. They, they will. <laughs> I think they're jealous of you. And it turns yeah, out definitely. you've got news anyway. I do. So instead of horoscopes, which are always completely lovely and fun and sweet, I have creepy things that kids have said. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah, from one extreme to the next. Yes. And so we were just talking about reincarnation. Yes. Right. Yes. Well. A mother wrote in saying that when her daughter was three, one day she said, Don't you remember, Mummy, before when you were the daughter and I was the mother, they came and chopped all our heads off. Oh. Chop, 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 oh, chop yeah. the whole how village. Old, how old is the, they they're telling this to a how old child? The three-year-old daughter is saying this to her mother. Oh. And so the mother said, like, fortunately, I don't remember any of this the head chopping. Creepy. So the daughter replied, well, it happened. And I remember it really well. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. How, how is this evidence of reincarnation? This must have been one of the studies. Stories. She remembers her head being chopped off. Y- yeah. <laughs> in a village. Yeah, yeah Shane. You, hang on, wouldn't your memory sort of go away if you had your head cut off? Oh. What would you remember? I don't really, I think as far as reincarnation goes, you remember. it doesn't matter whether or not your head was severed from your body when you died. Yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. So, um, uh, well, let's look at the last case where the Pam gets thrown out of a window of a burning building, mm-hmm. and they go back and research. With, with this kid, did they go back and do any research about? Did she give any names? Did it, or did she just make up a story 
because she watched um, TV too much about getting her head cut off. I haven't found any research on this, but if no. you don't believe in reincarnation, I've got another story. Let's hear it. Which is a bit more convincing. Okay. 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 okay, so a man wrote in and said that when his brother grew up, he was terrified of water. And so when he was about three or four, the brother asked why he was so scared of water. Yep. And he turned to him and said, I was in a big unsinkable ship. And he's three or four, remember? I was in a big unsinkable ship. We hit the biggest iceberg and then it was really busy and I got really cold and wet. And I went to a warm, bright place and waited until my next family came. Yeah, so Obviously, the Titanic. Yeah, yes. okay. But, Clearly. but how but, is what? All right, this. Yeah, okay, all right. We're, what? Okay, first of all, <laughs> as a three or four year old, most people probably hadn't watched Titanic that much detail, detail from it. True. Uh-huh. But True. The, the freaky thing is that the Titanic sunk on April the fifteenth, nineteen twelve. Yeah. Yeah. This boy was born exactly eighty years later. Exactly <laughs> eighty years later. April fifteenth, nineteen ninety two. I would have been impressed if it had been. The next day, yeah. but 80 years? Well, he what? said he had to wait until his next family came in a warm, bright place. In a warm, what bright hell? place. What? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, there are so many problems with this, but we'll move on. We'll okay. move on. I'm, I'm sure no one wants to hear my opinion. Ring, ring. Yes, we love your opinion. No, no we don't. No, that's, that's not going to happen. That's all in your head. Yeah, Susie, <laughs> you were talking about reincarnation earlier, which brought to your mind, Peter, a few yeah. queries. Yeah, uh, with, the, with the story about Pam. Yeah. Yes. First of all, he was saying that he was a black woman, right? Yep. A lot of, a lot of black women on MTV going, mm-mm-mm, right, <laughs> for starters. No, no, you didn't. And then the second part was, you know, Pam died and went up to heaven apparently, and God, what, what did God do? So he, Luke said, yeah, so Pam went up to heaven yeah. and God pushed... <laughs> yeah, see, see, it's even yeah. in her own right. Pushed everywhere. Pam out. Yeah, so it's everywhere. And, and Pam went but back. But I want to, in. Yeah, like. You can't come in. And don't they go to heaven and then live in eternal bliss? What yeah. happened there? Like, yeah. you get up there, you're like, yeah, yeah, I've lived my Why life, would let's you go. And God's all like, get out of here, get back into the. Bo-. Like, it doesn't. Yeah, what a nasty thing. Maybe there are work. rules in heaven. Like, if you get three strikes, you're out. You uh, just go and live another life. Maybe. Although, I mean. The weird thing about this is that heaven, generally a Christian belief, reincarnation, not. Oh, really? No. You do not believe. You go to heaven. Yeah. And that's, that's it. Right. Oh. You don't that's reincarnate. Right. unto a man to live only once. Because I thought it was all Jesus. connected as far as you get reincarnated because you still haven't learnt your lessons on earth. That's Isn't Buddhist. that part that's, of the that's Buddhism. Oh. Yeah, that's Buddhism. In Buddhism, right. you keep reincarnating yeah. until you finally reach nirvana, which yeah. is how, why you have those yeah. monks just or meditating their whole God. lives. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. Reincarnation is mentioned in the Bible, but as a bad thing. Mm. Right, it's it's talked about. Yes, Susie. They say it's not, you know, <laughs> it's go read not the Bible. <laughs> we Christians. The, the funny thing right. is, when I was a kid, because I was raised Catholic. Yeah. yeah. So when I was a kid, I used to pray to God at night to be reincarnated as a redhead. Why? Well, redhead? You're, you're halfway well, there. Wor- you're pink. That worked. Yeah. Pink. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but I, I liked I liked red hair. But the the ah. funny thing is that I was praying to be reincarnated. As a to, redhead. A, to a god that yeah. would probably send me irony. to hell for believing in reincarnation. The, 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 the irony and the contradiction yeah. of praying, <laughs> praying to a Christian god to be a Buddhist. Yeah. yeah. You're listening to The Elegant Universe. When we come back, Susie's got something a little bit special after this. I see Orion crew working that ship on You know we're going far. This is Susie J, and you can catch me and the team on Fridays from 4 to 6. Welcome back to the Elegant Universe on 94.1 FM. And in case you've just joined us, you've missed the secret of reincarnation. Field all, including the fact that this show is a reincarnation of a previous show. <laughs> Say it isn't yes. so. It is. We've reincarnated. We used to be called the Dark Star Effect. Yeah, we did. Which was a huge show. Yep. Absolutely big, but not as big as this. Hey, have you guys ever had nicknames growing up? Oh, I had heaps. Really? Yes. yes. Like what? Okay. Freaky. Freaky. As an adaption of my last it... name being Franklin. Okay. And I always used to do really well on tests at school, so they started calling me Freaklin 
and I became freaky. Okay. Right. So it wasn't. It was a nickname, not a label. <laughs> <laughs> Never, move on. Move yeah. on. Yeah, on. Um, <laughs> perhaps less flattering than freaky somehow is worm or wormy. Right. Because yeah. apparently, if I tie my hair up and before I had a front fringe, I looked like a worm. More specifically, a cartoon worm. Apparently, so they're trying to be nice. Wow. And then I remember I was debating one day in front of the school, mm. and I had a little cheer squad in the back, but because you had to be silent during a debate, they just moved their finger in the shape of a worm. Oh, <laughs> I love no. it. It was kind of nice. Yeah, you felt and loved. Yeah, I think yes. they were mean to. We love our worms. <laughs> you can imagine. He's <laughs> Samu. <laughs> Hayley Franklin. <laughs> no Rated PG-13. <laughs> well, you may or may not be surprised, but in the 15th century, going yeah. way back there, people had nicknames too. Wow. Okay. And one of the most common was Humpty Dumpty. Oh, okay. really? Yeah. yeah. And it used to be used to describe someone who was overweight. Of course. Uh, okay. That makes sense. Now, Shane? moving forward into... <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's on. I waited for that. It's on That's Donkey it. Kong. <laughs> um, so we're going forward into the 17th century, and this is all about Humpty Dumpty and the fall of Colchester. What? Okay. Right. So on. in the 17th century, there was... If we were at the English Civil War. There were parliamentarians who were also known as roundheads. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. And there were also royalists. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and the royalists fought many fierce battles and in the towns and in the countryside. Anyway, Colchester was one of these towns. And in 1648, the royalist army made a surprise attack and took control of the city. Surprise, we're here to attack. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. That's the most friendly army I've ever heard. Uh, excuse me, could you just open the gates, please? <laughs> anyway, the parliamentarians were furious. Boy, we're mad. <laughs> and one of their leaders, Lord General Fairfax, marched all his troops up from Kent. I'm Lord General Fairfax. Now all you troops march. Where to, sir? To Kent. <laughs> However... <laughs> The Royalists were well prepared. Gosh, we're prepared. Having mounted... <laughs> well, they'd actually say it. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. Because they, um, they'd mounted a great cannon up yeah. on what is known as St. Mary's Wall Church. Okay. Now, this cannon was huge, and it was so big, in fact, that like many oversized people from the 15th century, it was named Humpty Dumpty. Oh. And in charge of this great cannon was a one-eyed Jack Thompson who was a battle-hardened soldier. I, I, I am a one-eyed battle-hardened soldier. <laughs> With no depth perception, but <laughs> yeah, go on. Anyway, on the 13th of June, General Fairfax ordered the parliamentarians to begin their assault on the city. But Humpty was too big and powerful, and by midnight that night, the roundheads were forced to drop back as they'd already lost 500 people. Oh man, I think we've lost 500 people. <laughs> Anyway, General Fairfax considered a different tactic. Oh, oh wait. Uh, you know what? Let's seal the town and starve everyone into surrender. Anyway, the Royalists were now heavily surrounded by a ring of small forts where siege cannons were mounted. Oh, dear. I think we're heavily surrounded. <laughs> <laughs> Ridiculous. That's the end of my acting oh, career. Acting no cannon. supplies in, no supplies out. That's right. Now, the town was battered by cannon fire day after day. <laughs> and supplies <laughs> ran out and people began to starve. Oh, I'm starving. Being <laughs> reduced to eating <laughs> candles. Oh, nom, no. nom, 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 And nom. even pets. And even pets. Yeah. Has anyone seen Rue? Well... <laughs> Anyway, Humpty was still causing considerable damage to the parliamentarian forces, so General Fairfax told them to aim all their cannons toward Humpty. Okay. Now, as One-Eyed Jack was reloading... I, Humpty, I'm reloading Humpty. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he talking to the cannon? <laughs> he heard this ear-splitting bang. And the top of the Bang. tower had been... <laughs> had, that was ear splitting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, had been blown off, damaging the wall beneath. So Humpty mm -hmm. was on top of the building, fell away, the huge cannon tumbled to the ground. Ah. Now, the royalists, <laughs> who were the kingsmen, yeah. attempted to raise Humpty, but it was no use. And all the king's horses and ah. all the king's men 
couldn't put Humpty together again. Wow. You've and been listening to our version of Horrible Histories. We'll be back <laughs> after this. Because you know I'm all about that space. This is Frank Hamster, resident conspiracy theory expert for the Elegant Universe Radio Show. Listen in, 4pm till 6, Fridays, 94.1 FM, it's all a conspiracy. Stop that space. Welcome back to the only show where things go bump in the night. Actually get invited into the studio. We've been discussing reincarnation and the horrible history of the world, the British Civil War. Yeah, and I noticed you sounded like a pirate. Uh, I, are, yeah. I, are, <laughs> I are. I are. Well, when, when the script said one-eyed, I, th- I thought instantly pirate patch, parrot, all the rest of it. <laughs> but it's good that you're here, Frankie, because oh, right. it's time... For our conspiracy theories. It is, it is. Uh, I've, I've been away for a little bit. Um, is Tony Abbott still our Prime Minister? Apparently. Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I've been wondering about that. I reckon right now, if I... Because if I, I'm a little bit of a clairvoyant, Shane, I have to let it be known right now. I'm a little bit clairvoyant. And I reckon Tony Abbott right now is locked in his office in... Uh, uh, the Prime Ministerial offices in Sydney at Australia Square, which happens to be round because it's Sydney. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right now he's in there listening to Lindsay Buckingham. Okay. Uh, right now. Yes. Really, he yeah. should be listening to the show. He is. Yeah, I he know. He should be listening to the Elegant Possibly. Universe. But instead, he's listening to, I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> yes. Anyway, uh, conspiracies. Right. Everybody knows the Port Arthur conspiracy. And yeah, everybody knows yeah. that Martin Bryant couldn't have done the shooting that was reputed to have been done. Now, there's a little bit more to that. A little bit more to that. Okay. Um, and it's of a more of a personal level. I bumped into a couple of people a few years ago that identified themselves as ex-ambulance drivers from Tasmania. Uh And I said, why are you ex? To which they responded, oh, we were at Port Arthur. Now, being an ex-soldier, my immediate reaction was, oh, did you guys see a bit and had to quit? And they said, no, we quit because of the BS that was involved. Oh, really? Such as? Well, I said, what sort of BS? And they said, well, we were parked right outside the gates whilst four black vehicles with blacked out windows went through the front gates of the uh, Port Arthur historical site. Uh, Mm -hmm. Then they heard bang, 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 bang. Vehicles left, then they were called in to pick up victims. Okay. Now, this conspiracy actually stems from uh, a statement made by Premier Barry Unsworth way back in 1987 when he said publicly, the only way we'll get uniform gun laws in Australia is if there's a massacre at... Port Arthur. Really? Yes, and uh. that, that's true. So that's where that conspiracy stems from. Why specifically Port Arthur? Well, I don't know, and that's a mystery. Hmm. But why would you well, want uniform gun wasn't, laws? Wasn't Port Arthur the only place with uh, non-uniform gun laws? No, yeah. no, no. The, the entire state uh, of Tasmania. Tas- Tasmania? I but mean, I'm yeah. sure Port Arthur is just one place yeah. where you get a lot of tourists together in, yeah. a, in a tight spot. Yeah, you know? yeah. probably, yeah. Uh, so obviously they wanted to make the gun laws uniform. Uniform. But yeah. have a reason to do so. Yeah, like disarm the nation. Now you think, why would they want to disarm the nation? Uh, we've never had a civil war in Australia. We're not the kind of people that, uh, uh, you know, believe in the right to bear arms and want to uh, take up a armed insurrection against the government. We do, however, have a, uh, a penchant for killing feral animals in this country. Mm. Now, it's interesting to note, when Barry Unsworth made this statement in 987, according to the CSIRO, there were about one million feral cats in oh, Australia. Okay. Post uh, Port Arthur. Right. Yeah. Post Port Arthur. Now, in 2015, I read, recently read a report uh, by the CSIRO that did a count last year, and they estimate minimum... 20 million feral cats, maximum 50 million. Mm. Now, are you wondering why do we need all these feral cats? Yeah, we are, Of course you are. Of course you are. We want to know. Well, here it is. With all these feral cats eating all the endangered species, there will no longer be the environmental protections in place to prevent mass land clearing because people will be able to say, well, you can't clear that land. There's an uh, endangered numbat living there. No, there's not. The feral cats ate them all. (laughs) So, okay, chop down that tree. No problem. 
And that's what it's all about. That's where it stems from. It's not (laughs) the farmers being disarmed. They wanted it to be disarmed so they can clear more land, bring in more... And you're saying the Port Arthur massacre was part of this. Absolutely. (laughs) That's that's why it's a conspiracy. (laughs) You heard it here first, folks. We'll be back after this. Hi, this is Peter Gagliardi on the Elegant Universe. Tune in, 94.1 FM, Fridays 4 to 6. You know we're traveling to deep destiny. Welcome back to the Elegant Universe on 94.1 FM. Susie, we have a guest. We do have a guest. I'd like to welcome to the studio, first time up, Brett Hunter. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> so, uh, Brett is a boiler maker by day, but a stand up comedian by night. Cool. That is, correct. That that is, is correct. correct. Yes, yes, yes. So, how long have you been doing comedy? Well, I've been doing it over a year now. Uh, stopped for a, stopped for a little bit, um, and have just got back into it for the last six months. How and, uh, did you start? How did this all begin? Um, actually, uh, I started. I actually always wanted to be like I'm always the centre of attention at parties and that right. sort of sort of, sort of, sort of stuff. And mm-hmm. my friends always tell me that I'm pretty funny. So I done actually done a course. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And from that, I uh, actually met Ricky Nixon online, and I'm now doing shows with him. So wow. it's going not bad. Doing oh. shows with Ricky Nixon. Yeah, just open up for Ricky um, and Kappa and Dougie Chappell is another uh, yep. local comedian. He's really good. He's um, very good, yeah. And he's sort of uh, taking me under his wing and, yeah, showing me the right way to go. So basically. what sort of course? What sort of course are you going uh, to do to do this? No, well, it was a, it was like a week course. and um, <laughs> <laughs> A week in stand-up. Probably, yeah, yeah so <laughs> probably just making money. But, nah, it was a, a week course where they uh, show you um, – Sort of the, the way to do it. Um, Give be it ready for the stage, and then at the end of it, you have a um, like a gal like a show. And mm-hmm. yeah, the first one had 170 people there, so wow, wow. I was pretty nervous. How many were in the <laughs> class? It was about uh, 10 people, I think it was. 10 people. Okay. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, there was 170 people and I couldn't eat. So it was more than day. just your mums. Yes, yes. <laughs> more than <laughs> the mums and the aunties. So got a few laughs. So yep. it's good. I actually good. put that put that clip on YouTube. Okay. Mm-hmm. The Brett Hunter's first uh, comedy. Yep. Yeah. So it's had 2,000 views, which isn't too bad for the first one I put up. It's pretty good. good. And so how long ago since that first moment when you stepped on stage I- as a comedian? How long ago was that? Uh, it's uh, over, yeah, about a year ago. So it's exciting times. Um, I'm also doing some um, uh, skits on Channel 31 now. Oh, so yeah? It's called The Kick Show. It's uh, on 11.30 on a Friday night. So that's exciting as well. That's fantastic. How did you get into that? Um, one of the uh, main guys on the show come and see me at a gig and yeah, just asked me to do a little bit on the show. And then when I left that night, I got a message off him asking to do a regular spot. So cool. Exciting stuff. So where do you get your material from? Where does that all uh, come obviously, from? Obviously uh, from uh, real life stuff, uh, yep. family. I've got two kids. So yep. yeah, you can get lots of material from them. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> as you know yeah, yourself. Of course. <laughs> He's got Seven plenty kids. of material. Yeah. <laughs> Seven times. Yeah. Too much material. <laughs> Yeah, so that sort of stuff. And uh, so if you've been going for about a year, you must have already experienced a best and a worst gig. Uh, yes, Is that possible? Yes. Uh, yeah. The worst being uh, in a smaller crowd yeah. um, and the best, obviously, in a bigger crowd where you're getting lots of the laughs and cheers. Okay, cool. so we might go into more detail about that. We're <laughs> going to take a quick break and we'll be back with you really soon on 94.1 FM. If that's what you're into, then join it. Hi, this is Shane from the Elegant Universe on 94.1 FM. You can catch us every Friday, 4 till 6. And welcome back to the Elegant Universe radio show on 94.1 FM. We are here today with our special guest, Brett Hunter. Yo. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Thank you back. And we are going to hear a little bit more about your best and worst gig But I do want to hear some stories about this day. Yes. So this day in history, February 27th, I have a couple of interesting things that happened. So back in 1927, for the second Sunday in a row, a group of golfers were arrested in South Carolina for violating the Sabbath. How? As in... They were playing golf on a Sunday. Oh. <gasps> How dare they? I know. <laughs> and I, I love the fact that they were arrested twice in a row, like yeah. two Sundays in a row. <laughs> so, 
Like you didn't learn yeah. the first time. No golf on Sundays. Do you know what I heard on the radio today? Sorry. Go for it, yeah. Uh, that in, I think it was in uh, Korea or China or somewhere, they've just stopped uh, adultery as breaking the law. What? Ah. So where they used to get arrested if you committed adultery... They've now gone, oh, do you know what? Actually, nah, that's You're not You're not a actually law. a criminal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wow. just, for some reason that just made me think. Okay. okay. Also, just last year on February 27th, chaos erupted after the Swedish Public Employment Service accidentally invited 61,000 people to a job interview. Huh? Accidentally. 61,000 <laughs> oh, people. Oh, I've heard about this. They sent it off to all the oh, I everyone this was accidentally. Oh, a joke. Oh, didn't we have a story about this at the end of last year about someone? Well, it someone... probably happened more than once, you know. Possibly, but yeah. Imagine turning up to a job interview with, with 60,999 competitors. That's hilarious. It's pretty tough. <laughs> if life isn't hard enough as I it know. is. I <laughs> know. It's funny, eh? Talk about tough. So, Brett, come on. Tell us about your hardest moment in comedy to date. It was mm. actually, um, it was at a, uh, like a little, little venue, um, just... Um, uh, open mic sort of night, and yep. I'd done my first gig in front of 100, 170 people, like yep. I said, mm-hmm. um, and it went pretty good. I got a lot of laughs and that sort of stuff, so I come up to 10 people, which was just comedians, so yep. I was a bit nervous, and I seemed to rush my stuff, Right. and because I wasn't getting any laughs, I was rushing and rushing and rushing, and when I got halfway through, I just, yeah, forgot it all. Oh. So I'm standing there thinking, oh, no. I just can't remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> How so did you recover? Just started dancing. Good one. <laughs> wow. That's but, hilarious. Yeah, but it was, yeah, so I sort of wanted to retire after that yep. moment. <laughs> jump back on the horse. As and, you would, yeah. yeah. And it's going all right now, so. And so does that tell us about your best gig then? Um, yes. I actually, yeah, done a gig at the Comics Lounge the other night. Yeah. Um, cool. Oh, about two weeks ago. It was on a Tuesday. And it was uh, 200 people there, so I was pretty nervous um, yeah. going into that. And, yeah, got a few laughs. And I just wanted to break that barrier doing it at a, a big uh, yeah. club like that because they're, they're very good people down there, down, yeah. in that, um, down there. So when I got past that one, yeah, that's probably one of my uh, highlights so far. It's a tough gig being yes. a stand-up comedian. Especially and when s- no one laughs. Exactly. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and so if you – what's your five-year sort of – where do you want to be in five years? What sort of gigs would you really love to be able to do, say, uh, overseas in, in yep. you know, Yeah, well, I'd Edinburgh like to be or... like a uh, yeah, versatile comedian, like uh, do different venues, um, do even do footy clubs, cricket clubs, even uh, do alternative sort of places. Yeah. Um, as well as do corporate where you have to yep. change your sort of material. So if I can learn different sort of things for different sort of places, that'd make me happy in be pretty good to have your job so when you did your (laughs) course when you did your course what was like a couple of the techniques they told you like what uh they talked about um sort of callbacks that's where um where you you obviously tell a joke at the start and later on uh call back to that joke and make it sound pretty intelligent Mm. Mm. yeah that actually happens all the time when you pick up on a joke that they're going to run with the whole night yeah it's really intelligent but yeah yeah it's It's a through line (laughs) for the (laughs) night yeah Yeah, and it gets funny every time you hear it i don't know why it makes complete like no logical sense but for some reason if you hear it again it's like ha i've heard that before that's hilarious (laughs) yeah (laughs) all right we'll be back with brett and the rest of the team after this break on 94.1 fm Welcome back to 94.1 FM. This is your elegant universe. Okay, Haley, what's going on in the elegant world? Okay, well, I'm still stuck on this idea of reincarnation. Okay. And I was just telling the group that, not when I was a kid, just a couple of years ago, Mm. I guess. A couple of days ago. Just before, just before I came here. Yeah. Yeah. I used to try and convince my friends that I was actually the reincarnation of Kurt Cobain. What? (laughs) Because I'm pretty sure he died not too long before I was born. Yeah. Maybe. I should Maybe. check my facts. I don't know. Sometime <laughs> around then. It was the 90s. I don't yeah. know. 
And also, I have a really cool cardigan collection, kind of like his. Right. So, therefore, I must be Kurt Cobain. Oh, Obviously. Okay. But I have some more creepy things yep. that kids have said to their parents or siblings. Not okay. about reincarnation, just weird in general. Mm-hmm. So... One mother wrote in saying that driving home, she mm. was talking about girlfriends yep. and told d- the, her daughter that her son was only six years old and therefore didn't fancy anyone. Okay. Right. The son was in the back seat and he piped up, yes, I do. I fancy old ladies, oh. especially if they're dead. What? Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'd be taking my child to go and see a psychiatrist. Yeah. That's weird. Another story is that my three-year-old daughter stood next to her newborn brother and looked at him for a while, mm. then turned and looked at me and said, Daddy, mm. it's a monster. We should bury it. What? Well, I think that's just jealousy. Uh, yeah. That's just jealousy. Probably, Although yeah. some newborn babies do look really creepy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe Especially it was one of those. Especially if they've just popped out and they've got all blood all over them still. Yes. Another story <laughs> is that a... That's really detailed. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> Not that I've had one. <laughs> Did you see that baby the other day that was still in the... Uh, in the bag? Yeah. Like, what do you call it? In the, the bag. bag. In the bag. <laughs> the bag. <laughs> What's it called? Like, uh, it's an actual logo the, yeah, bag. Yeah, before, before your water breaks. Your and thing. That, that bag breaks that the baby's the, in. I should have paid more sack. attention. The and, sack. And, and, yeah. yeah. That was the baby that was in the sack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the doctor was, the woman was having cesarean. Yeah, yeah. And the baby was, the sack hadn't broken. And mm. they've actually got this incredible photo of this baby still in fetal position in mm. the sack. Sack. Yeah. Wow. How cool is that? It happens more often than you think, One really. One in yeah. 500,000 yeah. babies. Yeah, it's so... Think but, about. but who else has taken a photo of Yeah. Yeah. And take that. Take other that. Other media channels. <laughs> yeah, <go on. laughs> okay, so another story is I was tucking in my two-year-old to bed. Okay. He said, goodbye, Dad. Oh. Okay. I said, no, we say goodnight. And he said, I know, but this time it's goodbye. Oh. <gasps> Oh, that's oh. not creepy at all. You wouldn't sleep he, that night. He survived you'd, the night. You'd be I don't watching know your what kid all about. night, wouldn't you? Do like, you reckon the kid's just like totally yeah. already cottoned on yeah. to how to psychologically yeah. screw his <laughs> day over? I've got, a, I've got a couple of kids and they say the weirdest stuff um, all the time. Mm, I the bet. Day, they said to my wife, um, you're annoying and you talk too much. Oh. <laughs> that would have but gone do you overwhelmed. say that to her? Well, she, they might have heard me say on the phone to my mate, but no, yeah. they, they come up with the funniest things and... This sort of stuff, yeah, you, you, you do believe it. And, yeah, it's just weird stuff that kids say. It's mm. pretty, yeah. Pretty exciting. Every now and then I, I will actually play with what they're, wherever they're going with it. Yeah. Right. So they go, Dad, is there a monster under my bed? I go, what, there's a monster under the bed? Quick, <laughs> let's get under the covers quick. I'll, I'll freak out more than they will. And they go, no, is there a monster? I'm going, what, there's two monsters? Oh, my God, we're going to die. And I throw the whole house into complete panic. Because, of course, the kids go with wherever you're going to go with yeah. it. So, so now your kids sleep with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Pretty All much. seven in the bed. Yeah. <laughs> you're just teaching them to have vivid imaginations. I oh, know. They're going to yeah. be very creative. Well, we do this thing when we drive to school where every day it's a different planet. Where we're flying on a different <laughs> planet. So we look around and we go, oh, I see those aliens over there. Yeah, yeah. And whatever day it is, like today was lava day. Right. Where everything was fire because it was really bright. Yeah. Mm. And there were fire people walking around. We're going, oh, don't touch the fire aliens, you know, <laughs> or they'll burn you. And then one of my kids goes, well, how did they build a house then, Dad? And I said, with lava, come on, <laughs> get it together. Oh. And they actually bought it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor kids when they get to school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, Everyone's boring. boring. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, speaking boring. of planets, I've heard that my very beloved Pluto might have another chance at getting back into the main mm. cool gang of planets. Yeah, I know. I think it just should be an honorary planet. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've yeah. been a planet for long yeah. enough. Yeah. yeah. Why not? And there's another planet too. Uh, serious? Yeah, that's all it. Mm. Are you then, serious? Yeah, they're thinking about serious. putting another one. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> yes, and <laughs> I can on, give bro. you all the details on. on that after the break <laughs> if you're yeah. listening and not making puns about yeah. planet names. <laughs> <laughs> and also, did you know Earth has another moon? We'll be back after this. <laughs> Oh, it's a barrel of laughs this afternoon at the Elegant Universe Radio Show. It is. I want a new photo. Anyway. (laughs) Go on, Hayley. What have we got? Yes. So before the break, I mentioned that Pluto 
might regain its status as a real planet. Yes. Right. Woo! Which I am particularly about excited time. about because I grew up knowing that Pluto was a planet and yep. Pluto was one of my favourites yep. because we will have to have favourite planets and planets that we don't like, mm-hmm. Mars. Anyway. You don't like Mars? <laughs> That's a bit. What did Mars ever do to you? It's kind of like the gym junkie of the planets. Like, it's like, <laughs> gym junkie? <laughs> Go oh, on. I've got to have my protein shakes and I'm not sure. Protein shakes? It's red. It just sits there as a red yeah. ball. It's a bully. It's a bully. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Go on. Pluto, Go on. Yep. sweet innocent little Pluto, could yep. become a planet again, mm-hmm. as could Ceres, another planet in our solar system, yep. also thought of as a dwarf planet. Yep. And this is dwarf. Is that politically correct? Yeah, yes. for a planet. Scientifically correct. <laughs> Until a planet goes, hey, we like to be called small planets. <laughs> <laughs> the yep. little planets. Yeah. Okay, so NASA have a couple of missions that they're conducting yeah. this year yep. using the Dawn spacecraft and the New Horizons spacecraft. They're cool. going to be getting extra information on both Pluto and Ceres. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I bring this up is because this new information could lead to them regaining the status. Now, there's a bit of controversy about how Pluto became a dwarf planet in the first place. Okay. Because basically, it was decided by a vote of the International Astronomical Union. Okay. Okay. There are 10,000 members of the International Astronomical Union. Yeah. And 237 people voted in favour of Pluto becoming a dwarf planet. Okay. Which, out of 10,000, is not many. Yep. 157 people voted against, and 9,500 people were absent. Oh, (laughs) absent. So, taking a day off. Why don't we just, you know... 95% of the union... Wasn't Didn't even there when it was vote about the status of Pluto. <laughs> Are you serious? I know it's like a life changing dis- changing decision for Pluto and anybody born what in my generation and earlier. Than doing your job, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the other point, the other yeah. argument, is which criteria it meets as a planet. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So first criteria. Yep. Is the planet spherical? Hysterical. Yeah. Spherical. A Round spherical. like a Round. ball. Yeah. But is it hysterical? It no. is. Oh, it, it is, is now. <laughs> yeah. And both Pluto and Ceres are. Yep. Okay. Does it orbit a star? In our mm. case, the sun. Yes. And yes, both of them do. Yep. The criteria that they don't tick, however, is that they have not cleared their neighborhood. What, what do you mean? <laughs> Basically, it's because Ceres lives within the asteroid belt and yeah. Pluto within the Kuiper belt. And I hope I've got that the right way around. Yeah. I'm, I'm very scientific, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. Anyway. <laughs> So because they live in these belts and they're not like they're surrounded by other objects in yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So for some reason this like a handbag and Yeah. 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 Space yeah. junk. No. <laughs> uh, like other things that live not live float in space, take up space in space. Yes. Okay. And so for some reason it has been decided at some point in time that yep. this is a criteria for a planet. Right. Yeah. Which some astronomers are saying is kind of random. Like mm. why is it not a planet? It's because it has neighbors. And the even more convincing argument is that shouldn't its status be determined by what it actually is rather than where it is? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm hoping that once they gain a bit more information on both the planets they can be mm. added to our proper planets of the solar That's like system. saying a redneck who keeps car parts on the front lawn doesn't have a house. <laughs> no, no, it's not cleared. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah, cleared. Exactly. Your lawn isn't cleared. Yeah. But it's still a house. You know, exactly. how stupid is that? Anyway, tell us what you think. Go to the Elegant Universe radio show page and tell us whether you think Pluto should still be an honorary planet. We'll be back after this. <laughs> And welcome back to the Elegant Universe Radio Show on 94.1 FM this fabulous Friday afternoon. We are here with Brett Hunter, the team, and I want to know what happened on this day in history. Okay, so on this day, February 27th, in 1964, the Italian government made a public appeal for help with the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Mm, Okay. It was leaning too far. Right. At this point in time... The top of the tower, the tower is 180 feet tall. Yep. The top of it was hanging 17 feet south of the base of it. Whoa, that's pretty... pretty It was such a lean that if there was a storm, the building was yeah, probably going to fall over. Now, I have a history on the construction of the Lean Tower of Pisa. Yeah. Because how did it get that way? Yeah. 
I hear you all asking. What happened? Yes. Well, how, yeah. how to get that way, yeah. Hayley? Yeah. I'm Everyone's glad asking. you asked. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> okay, so construction on the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which was not at the time the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Okay. It was the bell tower of the cathedral right next to it, the Piazza del Mir- Miracoli, which is, you know, about miracles. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> it began on August the 9th, 1176. Right. So a long time ago, long 900 time ago. years ago. Yeah. Um, but it stopped when construction stopped when the tower was only three stories tall for unknown reasons. Could have been political, economical, or maybe they had realized that it already started to sink on one side. Right. Mm, maybe. Now, they did not know this at the time, but since it's been found out that the tower is actually built above what used to be an ancient river. Oh. And so the ground is a mix of water and silty sand, yeah, yeah. especially on the south side of the tower. Okay. Okay. 95 years later, they resumed the construction of it. Yeah. And the new engineer in charge decided to try and compensate for the lean that already existed by building taller walls on the south side of it. Okay. Yep. So it's, the walls are taller on one side than the other to try and make it straight again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. But then in the year 1278, they stopped construction again at the seventh story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. At this Sorry, point yeah. in time, the top of it was leaning three feet south from the base of it. So okay. a decent lean. Trust in us Italians to do that. You know? Know. Keep taking I breaks. Know. <laughs> yeah, having coffees and pasta. What's wrong with us? Anyway, continue. <laughs> in 1360, they began work on the eighth story, the final story, which is the bell chamber. Right. They tried to compensate for the lean by building at a slant. So okay, yeah, yeah. Building on an angle. Yep. And they completed the tower in 1370. As it was standing there, as towers do, you know, mm-hmm. it leaned a bit more every single year. Yeah. In 1550, it was 12 feet south of the base. Whoa. There were numerous attempts to repair it, including excavating on the north side of it underneath. Yep. Right. Drilling holes and pouring concrete in. Yep. And every single attempt actually made it lean further over. Ah. So this led to the Italian government having to have a public appeal yeah, in yeah. 1964. <laughs> However, even those attempts yeah. did not fix it. There were similar things again, drilling, concrete, which made it lean further and further over until 1990, they actually had to close the tower to the public. Really stubborn little thing, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So then throughout the 90s, there were numerous attempts to save it. Yeah. They used counterweights. They poured a concrete foundation around the base of the tower. They even asked really nicely. They asked really nicely. They prayed <laughs> so, to God. Mamma mia. They, yeah. were, yeah. <laughs> a bop a they placed underground cables to secure it yeah. and uh, extracted soil at a very, very slow rate of one gallon per day Okay. underneath. Until finally they were able to reopen it in 2001. Mm-hmm. They had brought the tower upwards a foot and a half a bit more. Mm-hmm. So it's still on a lean. It's yeah. on quite a lean. I've been up it recently, mm. a few years ago. And it's on a real lean. Yeah, yeah. But they predict that it has another 300 years of life. Oh. Ah. Which in the in his lifespan isn't that long. You'd hate for him to get it wrong, wouldn't you? And yeah. some guys like you know the whole hold it hold it up and take a yeah. picture, yeah. but he actually tries to hold it up and falls on him. So yeah, basically, what I'm up. taking away from this is that Italians can't build towers or drive ships. Yes. No, they can, but we take a very long time and we don't <laughs> always get it right. And we crash <laughs> into yeah. rocks yeah. a kilometre. Oh, and build yeah. on really, really bad <laughs> yeah. places. Yeah, and, and just keep trying and yeah, failing. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Thank God they know how to paint ceilings. Mm. Yeah. Go to the Elegant Universe <laughs> radio show page and tell us what you think of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. <laughs> Welcome back to the Elegant Universe Mm -hmm. on 94.1 FM and worldwide on the 3WBC network. Yes. You can join in the show, be part of the fun by going to the Facebook page at... The Elegant Universe Radio Show. Okay. Do we have a website? No. Blank silence. No, we don't. We don't. (laughs) Tumbleweed. Who needs a website when you have Facebook? Yeah, exactly. See, that's my point. That is my point. Facebook is, yeah. Yeah. Is the website maybe? We do need a website. what have you guys been up to this week? Susie, you've uh, you're making a movie. Well, I'm in a upcoming Aussie, completely Aussie movie. Yes, it's called Pretty Little Things. 
Cool. Yeah. Pretty little thing. Yeah, it's been all over So I've been the doing some rehearsals for that this week. Uh, excellent. Mm-hmm. Cool. Anything? Can you can you say anything about it? Like any top secret military stuff or yeah, that only we can hear? Yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> all I can say is I didn't do it. No. <laughs> uh, oh, I, so it's some murder. Well, mystery. what I'm hoping is that next week I'm still waiting for confirmation is yeah. that the directors Chris and Rob Smellen will be in with us next week to talk Brilliant. further about cool, it. So cool. I will uh, have be tight-lipped until then. Okay. Ah. But, uh, yeah, we'll... we'll yeah, throw uh, them we'll, in the deep yeah, end. We'll Absolutely. wait with bated breath for that <laughs> because <laughs> that will be awesome. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool. And they'll be our first movie people Ooh. on the show. Yeah. Oh, They've no, we, ha- we had... Um, Andy Rhodes. Andy, Andy Rhodes. Rhodes. Andy yeah. Rhodes. Okay, I, mean, I restate, they'll be our first movie people. <laughs> Directors. <laughs> gen- directors. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. Andy was great. He was good. Yeah. Yeah. What about you guys? What have you been up to? Ah, uh, well, we got a, a really amazing gig. Yeah, we've got some yeah. really, really big news for everyone yeah, out there. Big news. Okay. We so, have so. a huge, huge gig coming up. How huge? I mean, like, like this so is, huge that big looks small compared to this. That's right. So yeah. small. I mean, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Right. yeah, it's it's a massive, massive uh, gig, as we've said, and it's at a really cool place called Remos. Remos, yeah. yeah. And where's it's, that? It's on the 29th. Uh, it's towards Lilydale. You yeah. just look Churnside at Churnside Park, yeah. Switchback Road. Yep. What it is? It's a really nice. The food is and fabulous. oh my god, yeah, yeah the, the, the food. food will knock you over. We had they brought us in, you know, when we were doing the, the wheeling and dealing. Yeah. Uh, they gave us a meal. It was absolutely excellent. What was it? Um, I had a marinara, yep. like yes. a spaghetti marinara. Mm. But you know how normally they get all the cheap and nasty bits and pieces and just throw yeah. it in there? Yeah. That's what I expected. But everything was like proper. Mm. Cool. Yeah. It wasn't just... And if it's in Lilydale, I bet the chicken's good. Yeah. Uh, well, I they, had I had the salmon. <laughs> yeah, and they won yeah. awards the for their for their food. So yeah. I'm not sure about the chicken, but the the uh, chicken schnitzel. Yeah, oh, the, see, and I'm the a, marinara. I'm a schnitzel girl. Yeah, the yeah. Wow. schnitzel girl with my bottle of wine. I'm great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Able to mime wine. And so what? Okay, so what's happening at Remo's? Like, tell me. I, okay, the, I want more. The show <laughs> is me, yours truly, <laughs> my full yeah. stage show. show. The okay. full, full stage show. Mm-hmm. It's on the so 20, this is interesting because you don't yeah. talk yourself. Up much about no, it. No, he never does, no. does he? We have to I draw it out of mystery. Yeah, I so I want more. Come on, more yeah. details. Well, it's it's me on stage doing my full show. Yep. The show that I've done all over Australia. I've done it in festivals. I've, it's this is how I earn my living doing this show all over the place. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It's I I have the the honour, the privilege, and have worked very hard to be one of the top five in the country doing this. Yeah. Uh, we get to do the gig here. Yep. In in our basically in a hometown, just yeah, in our backyard, pretty in much. Our backyard, basically and uh, if all goes well it's going to be a regular show so yes. you guys will be able to come along for a great meal so yep. yeah. Haley and I can come there. and watch is yeah this- so, well, yeah, yeah. So watch, anyone, yeah, what, yeah. Watch. No, we'll let you watch. We'll let you watch. <laughs> <laughs> I like to watch. Yeah. But so, like seriously, this is open to anyone. It's not a corporate or anything. Oh, no, no, no. This, no, is, this is a yeah. public event. Oh, yeah. cool. And, uh, uh, yeah. See, the, the thing is, uh, funny you should mention that, because for many, many years, because of the, the level I got to, I could only do corporate shows. Mm. Yep. And it, was, it wasn't impossible to do other shows, but I had to do little five, 20-minute spots. Okay. Mm. And you can't really do your full show. Yeah. My corporate show has been all over the country. Yeah. This is my corporate show mm. live on stage in front of normal, everyday people who only have to pay mm-hmm. 40 bucks for a ticket to yep. get in, which includes a meal, mm. a great show, possibly a special guest artist in front of the show. Yep. It's going to be totally awesome. Also, we've uh, there's uh, advertisements of, of us in what... what Papers and magazines and stuff. Oh, the leader and yeah, there's there's yeah. Uh, press releases in the leader. There's yeah. press releases in the what it's was that other magazine? Magazine, Beat? yeah, Beat? something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. I don't, yeah. don't know. Yeah, I never look. I've never seen myself on television. Mm-hmm. I've never seen myself in a movie, and I've never watched my show. No, he hasn't. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, no. we debrief it, but I I don't. Sure. This is exciting. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. It's yeah. going to be yeah. Yeah. Definitely. To so dollars, come so. along. If you want more details, go to our Facebook page at <laughs> The Elegant Universe Radio Show. And all the details will be there. Date sitting. You can book ahead. I believe you can turn up on the night and just have a really good time. Yeah, yeah. excellent. 
We'll go into a break. When we back, when we come back, the end of this Plus Elegant Universe. our gig guide. Come back to the show that's so wet, it'll make you moist too. It's the Elegant Universe. It's time for the wind down and the gig guide. Don't forget, details about uh, seeing our show at Remo's. Mm-hmm. Coming up, go to the Facebook page, Elegant Universe, the radio, radio show. show. Yep, it's already there. Already there. It'll be up. You can get all the details, book and so forth. Let's go around the table. Frankie. Yeah, Shane, look, I... Uh, gigs this week. I've got gigs up, actually up in Canberra, so that's no use to Melbourne. But I want to let everyone know about Fart Lab. Fart Lab's yes. on for the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, people. Go to www.comedyfestival.com.au for tickets. Also, mm-hmm. the links will be up on the Elegant Universe page. Mm-hmm. You carry that. There are already some links there. It shows Frankie in a white lab coat. Mm-hmm. Like a doctor. Uh, a doctor. Yeah, He's got his BS. <laughs> He's got his BS. Man, Brett, Brett, me. what have you got up? <laughs> well, I've got a couple of shows coming up. Uh, one this weekend might appeal yep. to a few people out there. It's $50 all you can drink at the local cr- cricket club at Manor Lakes. Um, it's uh, me and Ricky uh, doing that gig. Cool. Uh, so that should be exciting. And at the Attic in a couple of weeks as well. And I'm also doing some, uh, you film some YouTube clips at the moment. And you cool. can find me at uh, Brett Hunter. Oh, that's yeah, that's my uh, Facebook page, and I've got a comedy page as well. Cool Brett and Hunter, nice. Comedian. And all the links will be up on the page as well by this afternoon. By the time you get home, dear listener, assuming you're in your car or your caravan or wherever it is you live, it will be there on the page. Oh, and just to remind everyone, the Elegant Universe is now on Twitter, so you can tweet us okay, anytime so using the handle at Universe Elegant. Okay, so what is Twitter? Twitter Twitter is a, is a basically a, a worldwide message service instantaneous that uses 144 characters or less or something like that. Okay. You Which wouldn't understand, Shane. It's on the internet. The inter <laughs> what? <laughs> the interweb. You'd be surprised how, just how net savvy I am. Susie, you've... Susie, you've got uh, you've got rehearsals this week. I do have for the rehearsals movie. this week, but uh, also yeah. So keep an eye out. We might um, have Chris and Rob Smellen, the directors and writers of this uh, feature film, in next week. But I'll post that on Facebook for you, confirmation. You, you know, this is just going to make you look so good in your eyes. They're probably going to like point the camera at you a lot more. What? What are, go, talk- oh, what are you talking? What are you talking about over there in the corner? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Hayley. Yes. Well, I'm back to uni. I've got a write some scripts and articles on weird food replacement ideas and cool. all weird that. food replacement soylent. ideas soylent sucks uh, oh, no, no, soylent no. soylent green <laughs> oh no uh, mm. it's people <laughs> it's people I tell you so I'm yes. um, yeah gonna be <laughs> Vegemite as people I love yeah. Vegemite <laughs> because it's people <laughs> Okay, you've been listening once again and have made it all the way to the tail end of another episode of The Elegant Universe, the only place on earth as elegant as an entire universe. Mm -hmm. On behalf of myself and the crew, we will ask you to do a few very important things for us, dear listener. Be good, be safe, be kind to small animals, and dream great dreams. Catch. That wraps up another life-changing edition of The Elegant Universe. Thanks for being part of the action. We love you. Wherever you go in this great, big, wide, wonderful world of ours, don't forget to tune in next time. Catch.